Nick, this is a, a fairly new product to you, isn't it? I'd just like to, to find out a little bit more about this mini chuck. Tell us the differences between this and the slightly bigger one. Uh, the original Nova chuck, which has served us well for many years now, has, has done very well. We brought out a smaller version of chuck. A lot of machines now have several turrets operating within the, uh, the envelope of the machine and actually cause a lot of problems with clearances uh, and tooling clearance. So we've made a smaller chuck now, which has got a lot more clearance around the front nose of the chuck. So for twin spindle machines, several turret machines, they work very, very well. They've got the same clamping pressure, the same... Um, speed ratings, the same accuracy, they take the same collets, so there's no real reason why you wouldn't have a smaller chuck uh, as opposed to the larger uh, mini chuck, everything's exactly the same. And this is a good way of, it, uh, of demonstrating it really, because here you have got the two different chucks, haven't you? This is the original, Absolutely. and you can see around the periphery here, you've got a mu it's a much bigger, yeah. bigger chuck, yeah. and whereas here we've got a reduced diameter, but what we're saying is these collets uh, fit into either or? Exactly the same. The, the chucks are in essence exactly the same chuck. It's just the fact that this nose on this particular mini chuck is pared down to the absolute minimum to make sure tool clearance and things like that is at its optimum. So better tool clearance, less weight as well Absolutely, on the machine yeah. spin. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. In actual fact, the next generation of this machine, uh, this chuck, will be made out of carbon fibre. So for actually spindle speeds and braking and things like that, that will be even better. Tell me about the diameters of the, of the bar and how that works with these then. I mean, do, do you have different, just different collets or what, when you go up to a bigger, it's a bigger chuck? Yeah, we're dictated by the bar capacity of the machine, basically. And these will fit nearly every CNC machine going. But we start at a 32 mil bar capacity for the very small little single spindle machines. Right the way up, all the way through, this one's a 52 mil bar capacity. So obviously it will take 52 millimetres through the, the, the bore. Um, 65 is the next size, a common size on most CNC machines. 80, 100, 120. And in actual fact, our system goes right up to 450 mil bar size. Uh, that's, that's some chuck size or some size of bar that yeah. is, isn't it? Well, is it, there anybody else that can do that? Not that I know of, no, to be honest. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a very unusual system in as much that it can be adapted to go right the way through the range of bars. The, one of the big things with Heinbook is the quick change, isn't it? The quick change mechanism. Yeah. OK, we've learned about the two different chucks here, but let's now look at how quick it does change, uh, take to change from collet to collet. Could you just take one out and put yeah, one sure. in? OK, the collet, there's a gun that comes with the chuck and that it literally just collapses the collet and pulls the collet out. Uh, there's no front cap to adjust, there's nothing on there to adjust. Inside then you'll find there's an end stop, so you can use that for chucking work as well. This is dead length? This is a dead length one, yeah. So we usually use this for twin spindle applications where we really don't want the collet being pulled backwards. So in this particular application, the collet is held absolutely still in the Z-axis. Uh, plane, so there's no uh, fighting between the spindles, trying to sort of, when you're unloading and transferring between spindles. So to then to actually just load the collet in, it's literally just a question of collapsing that, and the gun's locked, so there's no fear of trapping your fingers. Um, and that literally then just goes in like that, and changed. G going back to my uh, machining days, changing collets and things it used to take minutes it could take minutes yeah it's literally as quick as that it, it takes longer to perhaps clean around the taper with a bit of grease and a rag really if you don't, or rather than change the collet which literally does take a second and then talking about quick change the biggest thing about your products as well one of the big things is the adaptations the fact that you can change from collets to three jaws uh, to mandrels, isn't it? What, what, yeah. what, and that, that's unique, isn't it, to Heimbook, really, or pretty unique? Yeah, a lot of people have tried to copy little bits and pieces of it, but the complete system, almost like is a, like a giant Meccano set in some respects, once you've got the base collet chuck, which will do your full bar capacity of the machine, then people start to say, well, I need to clamp on an internal bore or I need to clamp something bigger. So we can actually put mandrels onto the front of the chuck, which literally takes a few seconds again because they've got zero point systems on them to adjust them. Or we can put a three jaw chuck onto there, which up to an eight inch three jaw chuck can go onto the front of a well, collet chuck. That, that's a bit good point about the positional repeatability or the positional accuracy mm -hmm. from going from one, uh, one say, three jaw to a, a collet. What, what is that? It's usually within three microns we can change over a collet 
to a, a three-jaw chuck to a mandrel and guarantee that it's going to be within three microns. We have got a patented Sendratex system on the back of all of the units, which actually negates the need to actually start adjusting every single part when you put it on. It's the same as putting a collet in. It stops the need for boring out soft jaws. You just put a collet in, you start your job, you take another one out, you put another one back in again. Soft jaws, you have to keep putting them on, bore them out, and things like that. So all these adaptions we can put in and know exactly where they are. Structure. It doesn't matter what spindle noses of the machine, your different doesn't chucks come with different spindles. flat nose or a din nose or whatever size it is. All these chucks come with different adaptions that will fit onto every type of spindle. Um, and indeed, whether it's um, a stationary machine as well, a five-axis machine. I, I want to talk about this one, Nick. If we just come up here, because th this is something that we've you ventured into uh, in, in recent years, uh, uh, hobbing or, or gear cutting. Yeah. Tell us about what we've got here and, and why this is advantageous to gear cutters. Yeah, well, all this system, once you've got the system actually on your lathe, let's say, it can all be adapted to fit onto milling machines or gear hobbing machines or whatever. All we need is an operating unit, which this uh, MS Dock is a, an, a manual operating unit. We can then put onto that mandrels, collet chucks, whatever we need. And this particular one is an elongated mandrel, uh, G213 mandrel, which is especially for gear cutting because it's taller, it moves the gear away from the base uh, of the machine, so it allows the actual wheel to actually cut the gear or more easily. But again, all of the parts along here are high rigidity, high accuracy parts that are all quick change. So on the gear cutting side, then the fact that you've got this elongated area here basically means that you say it's your tool path or your yep. tool to cut the gear, you've got a, a, you know, a much better working area. A absolutely. If you take this uh, mandrel, which is a, an adaption mandrel body, which does fit into a collet chuck, if you actually put a mandrel onto that and a gear, which let's say comes out, I don't know, six inches diameter, something like that, to actually get a wheel to cut the gear in here would start to foul on the plate of the mandrel itself. The same gear, if you put it onto that uh, mandrel there, there's nothing underneath it at all, so the clearance is a lot better uh, for hobbing gears, milling gears, whatever you want to do. In terms of the popularity of your products at the moment, I know Heimbrook is a, is a big name in the UK market. Mm -hmm. You are doing exceptionally well in, in all kinds of different machining environments, aren't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, indeed. I mean, we, we, we don't target one particular uh, environment. We're quite heavy in the aerospace, the medical. We do a lot of hip joints, things like that. So uh, the automotive markets supply a lot of our gear, uh, cutting mandrels. So and it's mainly for engineers that want to want, want high precision, accurate work holding, but change over from one quick one change. To yeah, absolutely. With high, 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 high values of accuracy and quick change. So we've, we've got to make a product, whenever a product comes out, it's got to be compatible with what we already do, but it's got to be high uh, accuracy and quick, quick change.